This video is about using the Optimize Parameters Evolutionary Operator to fit a relatively complex function to some data. This operator uses a genetic algorithm approach to efficiently find an optimum solution and in this video the use of a custom user-defined performance measure is shown. The optimizing operator works by creating a population of individuals which each have different parameter values. Each individual uses these parameters to create the model and work out an error with respect to the data. The individuals are then assessed relative to one another and the better ones survive to subsequent iterations where they pass on their abilities to new individuals. This approach can effectively and rapidly find global optima but as always vigilance is needed since it can get stuck in local optima. The operator works using numeric parameters, which means that a workaround is needed to allow a user-defined performance to be used. Fear not, this video shows the workaround. The data used in this video is word frequency data from a novel, and the function to be fitted is the Zipf Mandelbrot probability distribution. The process is illustrative of the general approach, and obviously you can modify it for other purposes. So what we'll do first, we'll look at some word frequency data and then we'll look at the distributions that you can use to fit to this data, Zipf's law, and there's a modification proposed by Mandelbrot. Then we'll look at the optimized parameters evolutionary operator in action, and we'll drill into some detail, namely how to determine a custom performance, how to get this workaround working to let that be used properly, and we'll briefly look at some of the important parameters to the optimize parameters evolutionary operator and just things to note in general not an exhaustive list because it's a it's a beast of an operator but some of the things I've, I've seen that are important so let's start so we have some data it's uh, word frequency data or actually probability which is just a frequency scaled from a novel is the it's a uh, novel called Moby Dick by Herman Melville, and I've just selected the top 100 most common words in this book. What you do is you count the number of times each word appears, and the most common word is given the rank 1, the second most common rank 2, and then I've scaled the count so that it's a probability, so the sum of this in the whole corpus actually is 1 so in other words, if you look at the book called Moby Dick, you will find that there's a 6.6% .6 chance of a given word being the, and there's a 3% chance of it being of, and so on. Now it's an interesting fact, if you plot the rank against the probability, you get a, a curve like this, and turns out that if you change this to a log log representation like so it approximates a straight line now this is the empirical law that was described by a number of people but it's most commonly known as Zipf's law basically Zipf's law here's some pictures Basically, it's saying that the the, fun, the, the uh, frequency or the probability is inversely proportional to the rank. So you can see that the probability is some constant divided by the rank. Okay, and if you take the log of that, the log of the probability is equal to a constant log k minus log r, and that's essentially what's being shown here. Now that is, it actually fits surprisingly well, um, but of course a considerable work is being, has been done to try and fit a better model to it and there's a modification proposed by Mandelbrot and essentially it, the, the uh, function is recast as probability is a constant again divided by another constant plus the rank raised to the power b, where b is a number somewhere near negative 1 or 1 in this case because it's on the denominator. And this tends to, if you do a certain amount of fitting, you can fit this reasonably well and it does a better job at the ends of the 
distribution. Now the interested reader is of course referred to Wikipedia where you can find more details. So this is Zipf's law written out in more, slightly more complicated mathematical terms but basically you can see it's uh, 1 over k is the rank s is 1 and this is the uh, harmonic number I think and basically the sum of that allows the whole thing to be normalized to 1. The Zipf Mandelbrot looks like a bit like this and again it's 1 over rank plus a constant raised to another constant divided by h in this case which is a constant which actually depends actually on um, some of the constants in the e equation above so this means that uh, actually there are only two degrees of freedom I suspect in the in the Zipf Mandelbrot um, approximation but for the sake of keeping my sanity I'm going to have three here so what we're going to do is f try to find the values of C, A and B that will fit this curve. And rather than go into detail, let's just run that once and have a look at the answer so we can get a sense as to what we're aiming at. So without looking at the detail, this is the result of the optimization step so again you can see the probability of the word the rank and here's an estimated probability which has been generated by the best fitting function if I plot that you again you see this is the the raw data if I now include the estimated probability and actually if I change it to a line so that it looks a bit neater you can see that it's done a reasonably good job of fitting that data to a curve and if we look at one of the other outputs from the optimized parameters evolutionary operator you can see that there are values for a b and c and there's also a performance vector so what this is saying is that if you set a b and c to these values plug that into the formula here you will get the estimated probability as shown in this graph here and there's an error on that as well and this is a custom error 0.141 you're free to change this of course but essentially what this means is that the minimum error it's found by trying various combinations of these parameters is has led it to conclude that this is the best fit so that's all very interesting let's drill into some details to see how that's working so first things first so let's look at these top level uh, operators first before we d drill into the detail here. So unset macro, this is an important step. This clears the values of macros. Now this whole process uses macros to generate attributes. If you don't do this, then there's a chance that the value of the macros is somehow remembered and is used in processing. So I just just for the sake of completeness I clear them just so I know where I'm starting from then there's a multiplier here we're going to use the a copy of the example set to generate the final answer so this these operators here actually would take the parameter optimum parameters determined by the optimized parameters and apply that to the original example set to generate the final answer this top row here inside the optimized parameters operator there's obviously some logging happening so I'm simply turning that to a, an example set and doing some light processing to make it easier to look at and this will let us understand how the optimized parameters operator actually does its job so that's the top level now let's look at the optimized parameters evolutionary operator itself so the first thing is the key point really is you choose some parameters that you'd like to vary now this is where the workaround I mentioned at the beginning comes in but you can sort of see here so you, you choose various parameters inside this optimized parameters operator there are a whole load of other operators and you can choose and vary any of them any of the parameters to them now it happens that inside here there are three operators which take numeric values and I can vary them so what this means is that I can vary a between the values 0 and 1 I can value B between the values minus 3 and 0 and C between 0 and 0 0.5 now obviously the particular domain problem 
often requires you to be a bit careful about choosing these values because if you get them wrong you might end up finding some local maximum which is not the optimum at all globally um, I won't go into details of that but uh, I've obviously spent a bit of time getting these parameters just right so what happens is that the optimized parameters operator will use these parameters to generate a set of individuals that it's going to try allow to generate a model and measure a performance but we need to go inside now and have a look and you'll see that these are the three targets of the parameter setting operation now these it's a bit strange but if you look at this these are generate data operators and the reason I'm doing this is this is the only way I could find to pass a numeric value to this operator here where the numeric value is extracted from the actual parameter setting that's being that's being done outside and essentially what I'm doing is I'm extracting the parameter here and putting that in another macro now obviously initially when I tried to do this I tried to set these macros directly but you can't do it because the macros seem to be strings and it doesn't like that it needs it requires the um, numbers to be actual numbers that it can vary so the workaround essentially is to use a sort of intermediate operator that is able to take numeric values and let those vary as the operator does its work and then simply extract the value of those parameters into macros so essentially at the end of this generate macro step there are three macros defined a b and c and these reflect the parameters that you're going to use to generate a model and this happens in this step here there's a generate attributes here and you can see here is the function the zip for Mandelbrot probability distribution so it's c raised to the power rank plus a all to the power b and c a and b all vary and then what I do is I actually then also calculate a an error so what is the difference between the estimated probability and the probability squared I actually multiply it by a thousand just to make it show up a bit easier so we don't get sort of a 0, 0.000 so it makes it a bit easier to understand what's going on that's just a scaling factor it doesn't affect anything so essentially what the end result of this generate attribute step is is an example set containing an estimate and a, another column another attribute which is the error the probability difference I perhaps should call it error um, and then what happens is I aggregate that so I do a very simple aggregation of the sum of the probability difference for the entire example set so I'm essentially finding the sum of the squares I multiply by a thousand just to make things show up but so essentially now I have an example set with one row in it and I'm then going to extract that into a macro here so I can see what's going on this is a an extract macro operator I'm simply extracting the value of the probability difference sum and then this is the key thing this is the extract performance operator this actually generates a performance vector based on in this case the value of an attribute some probability difference which is the result of the aggregate here and obviously there's only one so I'm just picking the first one I'm telling the optimize operator that I want to minimize this error so in other words keep trying new parameter values in such a way that the total error is minimized so I'm minimizing the sum of the squares in this case so this performance vector then is it will be output to the, to the final answer I'm also doing some logging here so I'm logging here the parameters the a b and c parameters and also the performance as determined by the error performance operator so as, as it proceeds we'll see many many rows being written as the optimized parameters operator tries different combinations of a b and c and we'll see the error as a function of time so let me get out one more so there are other parameters to this optimized parameters operator itself the important ones are max generations and population size this determine really how many times the operator executes now pro population size I've set that to 100 so this basically means it will create 100 individuals with different values of a B and C 
And then what it will do is it will assess each of those and keep the best ones and the determination about which ones to keep and then how to handle passing their 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 goodness on to the next generation is determined by these parameters here like Gaussian mutation, tournament, fraction and probability. Now I'm not going to go into details of that because it's far too complicated, take far too long. But the essence is if you change that and that, if you increase these, the operator will iterate many more times. You can also use early stopping to allow it to stop processing if it's basically not making any improvement. I'm not going to do that for now because I want to just show the whole thing running. So let's just run this again. And what we'll do is we'll look at the log output, which is this top row here. So this is the log output turned into an example set. So basically each time the inner operators were executed, there's one row has been added to the log, which is then turned into this example set. So you can see the first time it tried, it tried A, B and C at this value, and this is the error it got. And it's quite interesting to plot graphs of that if I do ID which I've added as the, that's the sense of the order in which the the operator executed and if I do error as a function of ID and let's put it into a log axis you can see that the error starts high and as a function of time the error decreases quite nicely and you can see that I think because there are um, because there are something like 100 individuals each time to being assessed there's some variation going on as each is assessed but each time a new set of good individuals are found and you can see the error is is, is declining quite quickly and then it's, it's beginning to round off and you can see right over here the error is 0 0.0143 that isn't necessarily the lowest error but somewhere around here you can see it's beginning to find quite a, a good low error. You can also see how A varies as a function of time. In this case I'll turn logarithmic off. So basically if you remember A was between 0 and 1 and you can see what's happening is that of all of the hundred individuals in, that were presented to the operator in the first iteration there's a big range of possible values of A and then as time goes on as the ID increments the individuals start to settle on specific values of A and you can see basically it's chosen this sort of row here there are some values of A that it seems to like more and more yes yeah, so what you're seeing here is as this is the ID 2592 so about the 2592nd iteration A was 0.811 but anyway this actually gives in a hint as to some of the possibilities for local optima so it obviously thinks this was a chance, this was a candidate these two here were, but eventually it settled on this path here. You can repeat the same thing for B. So it's found B at just below 1, negative 1, and it's about 0.9 something. But it started at minus 1.1 and then it just gradually improved that. But again, you can see there are certain other values for B here that could also have been candidates. You can also look at C. So sure enough, you know, again, it's found a range of values of C which were reasonably good in the beginning, but eventually it's settled on the value C here. So the final thing, how do we actually get the recover, the example set which corresponds to the best model? So Again, we have to sort of work a little bit harder at this because of this workaround. But basically, the result of the optimized parameters process is a, a parameter object. You can see that here. And it's basically saying the performance vector, which is the thing we've generated by hand, and these are the values of macro A, B, and C. So what we do we can actually use this to set various operators and then we can simply recreate the generate attributes step and the generate macro step to recreate everything inside the optimized parameters 
operator to recreate the optimum answer. So using set parameters, this is the output of the parameter setting object, macro A, macro B, macro C, and it's basically setting macro A and the detail of the actual parameter, and it basically applies that to an operator called macro A, and that happens to be inside the optimized parameters evolutionary operator itself. Anyway, the end result of this is that you can then use this this trick here to to recover what macro A, macro B and macro C were set to. And then you can then use that so this this function here, you can then use that to set macro A, B and C again. And then you can just do the estimated probability and probability difference as before. And by this method you, you recreate the actual best model. Let's see that actually working. So if I go and set a breakpoint before and breakpoint after this generate macro. It takes a few seconds. So now here's the input example set. So there's the probabilities here, the word and the rank, but there's no estimated probability. If I show the macros, you can see that the last set of macros are here. Now if I run this once, I will actually generate some new macros. Sure enough, there they are. So these macros here are the optimum value as determined by the optimized parameters operator itself. And if I just continue to the end, the estimated probability here and the probability difference here are all based on that calculation using these values of A, B and C. And you can see, that if I look at the parameter set output, it corresponds exactly with the macros here. I haven't calculated the error macro, so it's a bit different. And ignore that one. But these ones here are the key values. So it's quite interesting. You know, you can plot this now. And clearly, you can use this as the basis for your own custom performance measure. And the, the essence is you, you generate attributes here, so this this is where you do your modeling and you can do your estimate against what the, the answer you know you're aiming at is. And this one is showing the minimum sum of squares by doing this aggregate here. You could also do more calculations after this aggregate. You could do some far more complicated calculations based on the sum or whatever it is or whatever you like really. You know, the essence of that then is you can extract that into a performance vector which is this step here. And this by this method and this workaround obviously you can plug in your own functions to maximize an arbitrary function with your own arbitrary performance which is very nice. Okay so let me run that one more time or just as a final step, look at the, the rather nice graph, which is always nice to look at. Here we go. So as before, the blue dots are as the raw data, and the, the red line is the sort of optimum function.